Alright, welcome back to the Money Tone Half Crown series. First of all, I'm very happy my first three videos have gained more views than any of my recent prints ones. So obviously you guys like these ones and like these videos. Now, we reach Queen Victoria. And this is an important reign. I mean, compared to all the earlier Kwangs that have come, um, this reign is much more po popular. Um, the Half Crowns had an interesting story during Victoria's reign. Um, they were issued up to 1850, and then they weren't issued again until 1874, except for a couple of um, so-called um, proof sets and one-off years, but they don't really count as part of the series. One of them's 1853, for instance, and um, 1862. They were like one-off patterns and with extremely rare proof sets, which no one outside of the absolute elite would have. So um, they pretty much had this one design, which is, um, I think it's um, a Wyon design, you know, for the half crown, they also had a similar one for the crown. And um, as you can see, this is the portrait they used of the Queen from 1838 through to 1887. On these coins, it's uncrowned. Colonial coins use the same young head, which is, um, I think it's um, William Wyon, but up to 1901, but it's usually crowned to its colonial coin. As you can see, this coin is 1842, and um, they started issuing the half crowns in 1839. There's a good reason why this coin was 1842 and not 1838 or 39. One, there was no coin in 1838 or 39. And, um, sorry, I just got a very frisky cat there trying to do something naughty while I'm on the phone. Um, well, 1839 is extremely rare. Um, they issued main them for a proof set, which is the rarest thing alive, which includes the famous Una and the Lion coin. Generally, if coins worth over a thousand pounds, I don't have it. And again, we're talking about coins worth in the tens of thousands of pounds here. 1840, there was about a quarter of a million minted, but I don't have one. 1841 is another insanely rare year with about 40,000 minted and is basically one of the keys in the whole Half Crown series. So I don't have it. 1839, no mintage was given, but I estimate it's around 10,000 coins. So we're talking absurdly low numbers here. So my earliest for Victoria is 1842, and it's a slightly more common year. Eight, about 300,000 were minted, which is very low by Victorian half-crown standards. As you can see, um, most of these early Victorian half-crowns are like worn to death. None of them are better than fine, and the one it is clearly was previously used as some piece of jewellery, because there's still clasps on it. Okay, this is 1842, and I'm going to run through these because they're all very similar. Yep. Okay, next we 1843, there was... It was a half crown minted, but again, very low number was minted, and I don't have one. It was about 300,000. This is 1844. Again, it's the same sort of good to VG region, as you can see. Victoria's a silhouette, basically. Um, quite hard to find these coins, actually. Even one like this, still looking at $40, $50. Yep. And, um, yeah. So 1844, 45, and 46 were the common years for around a million to two million minted. 1845, this is actually a lot better, this is probably close to VF, but as you can see, it used to have clasps on it, so it's basically a damaged jewellery coin. And in general, coins that used to be part of some jewellery usually have very little value beyond melt. But this is slightly better, as you can see, 1845, and because it was jewellery, it's also been cleaned, and as you can see, incredibly badly cleaned, because as you see, there's quite a lot of wear there. But still, definitely a better than average piece for this collection anyway. 1846, the great year of the first potato famine. Now, this is probably one of the worst half crowns I've got. Just look at it, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And even worse was I only got this coin this year. But I think I paid about $30 for it. But 1840s Victoria half crowns are in demand, much more in demand than the George IV and William IV coins I showed you. I mean, this is fair, basically. I mean, you look at that, that's about as bad as they're going to get. And 1846 isn't even a rare year. It's the second most common after 45. Okay, so very average. Yep, so there you are. Just terrible. I don't have 1848 because it's as rare as hell. I think 1847 or 48, I forget which year they minted one. I think there wasn't any minted in 1847. 1849, now this is another scarce year, and this is a decent coin apart from some extremely harsh cleaning, as you can see. Probably hysterically done, cleaning and dipping. Um... Despite that, this coin would still rank fine. As you can see, there's quite a bit of detail on it. I probably know, actually, it's probably closer to very good, to be honest. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, I bought this in 2020, so I was probably a wee bit optimistic back then. Yep. And um, the date on it is very good, though, 1849. It's a small nine. As you can see, 
The falls are very clumsily inserted on the planks. The quality is not very good in striking. They really went down from the Georgian era. Then we've got 1850, and this is a decent, honest coin. It's not plain, it's not especially worn, and it's quite scarce. And this is actually quite a nice coin, given the fact that, and this would be fine, I think, yeah. This was the last coin minted for 24 years, and probably saw in a massive amount of use. And um, as you can see, 1850. Now I want you just to look at that style of lettering, because when we come back 24 years later, you'll see the lettering has changed. Okay, so now we move ahead to 1874. We're not going to worry about proof sets and patterns and one-offs and replicas and things. In 1874, we saw the coin return after the florin. Because the florin was introduced because the coins were similar in size and most people were illiterate and didn't have lights. They could get the two coins confused. By 1874, they decided that half crab was popular. Let's bring it back. The florin stayed too. So this is 1874. Now the first thing you notice is the lettering seems to be more slender and longer than the... Um, earlier coins and they mentioned that the quality of striking of these um, later young head half crowns is very poor um, none of them were particularly common I mean the most they minted in the year was about two million but this is the era when New Zealand was a colonial frontier and a lot of these coins came here and they were heavily used and even before they did come here the British would basically scoop up coins several years old put them in a barrel and use them as ballast so the coins were already worn down to VF by the time they got here and this one is probably not even VG, basically. You know, although, again, with a lot of these, um, the um, shield appears better than the coins. 1875, again, you've just got more of the same here. Um, this one's probably actually a bit better. You know, it'll probably, I don't, I think this one might have been cleaned, either that or it's just a circulation cameo. 1876, now, yeah. this is one I got recently, and this one's actually not too bad, really. But as you see, this is the only period where I don't have any really nice coins. You're not going to see anything really nice until we get to the Jubilee era. Okay, 1876, again, it's at that sort of VG fine area. 1877, again, very worn coin, you know. But not bad overall, really. Yep, this is actually quite a scarce date, 1877. Number is in the um, hundreds of thousands again. 1878, and by the way, too, I don't have every coin of this era. Um, this is another very worn coin. I think I got this for less than melt value years ago. And you can see, you can barely see a date on that one. Yep. 1879, I don't have. That's no, a common date, I don't have it. This is probably the best of a bad lot here. This is 1880. It was probably cleaned in the past, but this is good fine. Just to have anything above fine is miraculous for this era. Um, this is actually not a bad coin. You can just see the difference in quality between VG coins and ones in fine condition. And I think I did pay a bit more for this coin. I think I paid about 80 or 90 dollars for it. And this, as you can see, you're starting to get some detail on Victoria's here, and it's 1880. That's a nice coin. 1881. Again, back to the average coins. Um, very mere, this coin. Yep. 1882. Again, this isn't too bad, this coin. This is probably pushing fine as well. Yep. Again, just probably harshly cleaned in the past. Yep, see, about fine, good VG, so. Close, 1883, this is also a decent coin in my opinion. So, yeah, this is also almost fine as well. Might even just reach into fine, yep. This is not bad either, yep. 1884, I don't have. 1885, however, I do have. And again, it's another very sort of average coin. This one's a bit more worn, actually. But it's got a nice circulation cameo to it. So again, it's barely VG. Yep. And then 1886. Okay, so now we're nearly 50 years into Victoria's reign. She's in at 67 years old and we've still got this teenage portrait of her. Again, we're looking at another coin that's sort of just south of fine. This one might actually just be fine because you can see there's definitely quite a lot of detail there on the harp and the shield. And probably enough for fine. You know, but again, Victoria's head lets things down. I would, on a bad day, say that's fine. You know, but again, I suspect it's probably been clean. So there you are. And there was also an 1887 of this type issued, but I don't have it. It's not that rare, but it's a lot rarer than Jubilee. So next, Jubilee and old head coins. And we're going to see some better quality stuff than these babies.